I'm going to show you how to do inverse kinematics with Coppelia Sim. Uh, we'll do a two-link manipulator, okay, which we've seen in the in the in the lectures in the past. What needs to be done essentially is you need to set a, the as the links and the joints in IK mode, which I'll show you. And then we'll use a dummy for reference end effector, which again will be clear when I show you. So the dummy is actually, uh, there's one dummy for the reference. This is where I want the manipulator to be. And the end effector is another dummy. And then what happens here is that uh, Coppelia sim gets the end effector to go to the reference. That's how IK is done. So then I'll show you how to add that calculation modules. And then I'll show you a Lua script, which helps us to move this dummy to wherever you want and hence helps us to move the end effect to wherever we want. Okay, and that's how you can do inverse kinematics. So let's get started. Okay, here is a file which I'll share with you. Uh, it basically has the two link manipulator. First thing I'll do is I'll set the joints in inverse kinematics mode. So if you click on the joint, you can see that they're set in torque force mode, go to the inverse kinematics mode. I'll do that for a second link. Okay, we also need to do another thing, which is get the links and set the links to be non-dynamic. So what it means is uh, they are going to be in inverse kinematics mode. So we don't want them to be doing any dynamic stuff. And so link links to show dynamic properties. Is dynamic. Okay, let's run this and nothing happens, which is good. If you're not done that, set those things, then you'll actually see that uh, the manipulator will actually fall down. Anyway. Stop this. Now let's add a dummy. So this is something new. We've not done adding dummies before. So here is a dummy. And let's me make this dummy for the end effector. Okay, I want this dummy to sit on the end effector. Let me make it slightly bigger so you can probably see it. Zero, five, six. So where is the dummy? If you click this, can barely see it. Okay, so let's, so in order to see it, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it onto the link to, where did it go? Okay, revert, put it in link two. Okay, there it is. Now you can barely see it. If you wanna move it, you can just click on that and just move it, there it is. It's pretty small. Let me just increase the size a little bit more. Point 0.1 might be good. Okay, now you can see. So I want to move this right over here. And actually the best way to do it is to click on uh, position. Okay. And then go to position. And then parent frame is basically this frame. Okay, so with respect to parent frame, I want it to be zero comma zero comma zero. So it comes right in the middle, okay? Now I know that this end effector is one meter long. And so I really need to move it over here by 0.5 meters. And I think that corresponds to the X axis movement. Let me just try this, okay, so perfect. So now the dummy you can see is right there, okay? You can also see it here. Okay, so I got the dummy, uh, made it an end effector. Let's create another dummy for the reference position. Okay. This is where I would want the manipulator to go. Okay, and uh, let me increase the size to 0.5. So the point one is better. There it is. And then let me change the color so it's not confusing with the end effector. So let's change that to say green. Okay, and then you can move it if you want to see where it is. So there it is, okay. Okay, now I want to essentially set it so that, so first of all, our manipulator is two dimension and we are in three dimensional space. So let me ensure that the Z coordinate, which is this coordinate you can see over here is the same for the reference as well as the, the end effector, okay? And so the easiest way to do that is to actually go to translate, look at the position of the dummy, which is at zero right, the Z coordinate, and then click on end effector and see its position. And again, see it's at 1.25 in negative one, which is 0 0.25. So let me move the reference first 
to point one two five. Okay, so you should have seen it go up. Okay, we're done with that. So now we have created the dummy and the end effect, the reference and the end effector, and we need to connect them. We need to tell them they are related or they are helpful to do IK. So what we do is we click on reference, I hold shift and click end effector too. So now both of them are highlighted, then right click and then say link selected dummies. Okay, I have a few options here. I use the IK tip target option. So when you do that, right, you'll see this red line, which shows that the reference is connected to the end effector. Okay, now before we can do the inverse kinematics, there's one small step we need to do. We need to go to calculation modules, which is this thing which goes like integral of x. And here, go to kinematics and add a new IK group. Okay, once we do that, we need to tell what is that IK group. In this case, we're actually linking the end effector to the, to the uh, reference through this calculation module. This calculation module ensures that the distance is going to be zero anytime we start the simulation. So select the reference, say add new, new element. And so you see reference comes here and automatically you see that target is the end effector. Okay. And now here we have, we have constraints, which is X, Y, and Z. Okay. Now, since this is a two dimensional problem, I really want to only have X and Y satisfied. So I'm going to unselect Z. Okay. Now we, I think we're ready. We just run this and well, nothing move. And I think it might be because I swapped this. Let me see. I believe I made a mistake here. This shouldn't be reference, but it should be end effector. And then let's see, I hope it'll work now. There it is. So you see that the, the end effect is shot to the reference and just lined up on that. Now, if you want to make it move, then what you do is you click on reference because that's the thing which is going to be moving around. That's the reference position you want the, the end effector to be. And then you start moving it and you can see that the manipulator is actually moving. It's actually trying to meet the reference position by changing the end effector position, which in turn sets the angle. So you can move it if you want. Some point of time, it will actually not work. So you can, if you go beyond the space of the work, the useful workspace of the manipulator, it just does strange things. So don't do that. So it all looks good. So that's how you get the manipulator to inverse kinematics in the GUI. Okay, now I'll show you how to set the manipulator to any position or the end effect to any position using the Lua script. Okay, so that involves a little bit of coding. So let's let's do that. Let's stop this. Okay, uh, let's open uh, well the new script. Insert a new script and we'll associate it. Well, we call this a non threaded script and close this. Okay, right now we will associate this with uh, base. Okay. You can associate with this, this with anything, that's no problem. Okay, we set this up, open this. Now we'll, we'll basically first get the handles for, well, two things. We need to get a handle for reference and we optionally can get a handle for end effector. Okay, we'll only need actually the reference handle. So I'm going to just copy my code, which I already wrote down to save time. This is pulling up. the handle for the reference, the handle for the end effector. Okay, the first thing is before you even try doing more complicated things, let's try to see if we can find the position of the end effector, okay, and the position of the reference. So for that, what we'll do is we'll use this command and we've seen this before. We've, we've seen get object position, right? It basically need to give the handle of the end effector and then minus one is saying that you want it in world frame. So that will print the position of the end effector. And then we'll also make it print the position of 
reference. So if you, if you run this code, you should see that what you, what you get for this print and this print is the same when the reference and the end effector on, on, on top of each other. So let's stop this. Okay, there is an, there is an error, object does not exist. So let's see what's the problem. Okay, so it looks like I, I specified end defector with a small e and here it is the cap e. So change that and run it again. Okay, now it's running fine. I'm gonna pause this and you can see that the position of the end effector is the same as the position of the reference. So they, they are pretty, pretty much the same. So now let's try to set the position of the reference and then see if the end effector goes there. So for that, I will specify position ref equals, so I need to specify the X, Y, and the Z, I know it's 0 0.125 because it's a planar manipulator, right? Uh, and then I need to also set the position. So for that, I need to use same dot set object position. We've done this command before, ref, position minus one. So that's showing index with the world. And then this will be position. Okay, I only need to specify what this position ref is going to be. Where exactly do I want the manipulator to be? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just get it from the translate option. So here is the reference. I'm going to basically move this Say I moved it here. Oh, I'm, I should stop this. Okay. okay, now I should, let me just move this. Let's say I want it here, okay? Now the easiest way of reading it out is go to the world frame and see what the coordinates are. So here it is zero and minus 0.5. So the, the Z, we don't have to worry because Z cannot be changed. It's, the, it's a planar manipulator. So I need to set it at zero, which is close to that value is close to zero and minus 0.5. So, Let's set that in the code. Let's go here, zero minus 0.5. Okay, and then let's run this. So you see it went there. So originally it was, uh, to convince you maybe I should do this. Let me move it. Let me move the reference first here, okay? So it's not at the position I wanted and then run the code. So you can see it moved there. Okay, so that completes how to point to a certain location. Give me, give me like a minute and I'll show you how to get this manipulator to draw a circle, okay? Just one, one more minute. Okay, so let, let's uh, now get the manipulator to draw a circle and I will draw a circle about this. So X equals, I don't want this, I don't want that. X equals zero plus, let's say radius of 0.5 math dot cosine of t. So you're using time to basically go uh, go forward and then y equals minus 0 0.5, that's the center. And then I have the radius times math dot sine t. So I've not defined t, but t can come from the simulation, which is sim dot get simulation time. Okay. And then the z is constant, it's point one two five. Okay, what I need to do now is wrap all these things. Hold on, let me just, yeah. Put this in this position ref, then I can just copy it here. Let me just copy this much easier. So I need to give the X here, the y and then the z and then if everything works i should actually draw the circle uh oh it's going in a straight line it's an error here 0.5 okay that looks fine okay so there it's drawing a circle if you want you can do a graph and show the xy uh, plot of the circle on a graph Okay, but this is how you 
essentially do inverse kinematics, you essentially define a reference, you define a end effector position and then get the reference to track the 